You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. So tonight I am joined by my lovely wife and actually my co-angler, Thursday Night Derby on Big Slack on the Potomac River. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about basically her first tournament ever. Uh, right now, she's batting a thousand when it comes to fishing tournaments. I think she's been. How many times have you actually been out on the water now? I've been out on the water with you multiple times. Have I actually fished every single time? No. How many times have you actually gone fishing? Probably like five ish times with you. Before that. Out of five years? Before that doesn't count. When was the last time you went fishing before this previous time? Chicken Omni. Which was? A year ago. Yeah. So you for twelve hours. Yeah. So you don't do a lot of fishing. So guys, today's today's thing, we're gonna do a a tournament breakdown, get her thoughts on the whole situation. And then we're also gonna be talking about Kevin Van Dam and the recent MLF event that just went down way up in the great state of Michigan. So, you know, let's just get into it here. And please let me know in the comment section down below how is our audio before we get started. Uh Carter J, what is up? Nice to see you, boss. Uh David Williams, how you doing? And then I really hope you guys really go give a watch to the Joe Love interview. That was really a probably one of the bigger interviews I've done this year. It's right up there with the one I did with the Department of Wildlife Resources in Virginia when I got to go down to Richmond. I really enjoyed that conversation. We covered a lot of things. And then since that episode is up now, I can say that in the episode we talked about this, but I'll make an announcement now. Uh, the Maryland Department of Wildlife Resources are actually creating a black bass stamp. So now you can actually raise money. You can donate to them to raise money to actually do bass stocking program. It's really cool. It, it's something it's that we've been exciting. talking about. Yeah, it's been something we've been wanting to talk about. We've been talking about for a long time to get involved with in Maryland and Virginia, some kind of stocking program. And it's a step in the right direction. But you guys aren't here really for that. I'm here to answer your questions. And then we're just going to kind of get into it. Carly. Really, I, well, I think we're just going to have this conversation really about what happened and how all this come to pass with Thursday. Okay. So a week before we went fishing, Tom goes, make sure you're off work in time on Thursday to go with me. You're going to be my co-angler. So, oh yeah. And I guess this is the part that I need to add. So my regular Cole angler, uh, Cole Curtis, um, he was out of town. He was, uh, I think he said he was sunbathing in a banana hammock on a beach at Myrtle fishing. I love you, bud, That's but right. he was out. And so I really wanted to fish and I thought this would be a fun time to actually get you back out on the boat. Right. We, he didn't say, Hey, yeah. do you want to go fishing with me? He just says, make sure you're off work in time to go mm -hmm. fishing. And I said, okay, here we go. Let's do it. And, and some context with this is I, I really wanted her to go fishing last year. And we, we went to do this, uh, we went down to, uh, Chickahominy, Chick Chickahominy river and it was a disaster with the Shenandoah, uh, Shenandoah Valley Bass Masters Association. And it was the tire. We had a huge issue with the boat. We had a wiring issue. This was before I went to new horizon to get the wiring fixed. Uh, the boat wasn't working right. Then we had a major, flooding. a major just, truck. We were sinking. Yeah. And then we had a truck problem where the, the tire exploded. The front passenger yeah. side tire on our dually Ford F three fifty exploded mm -hmm. while we were going 60 miles an hour down an interstate. Yeah. That so was terrifying. That went well. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. We were saved by Jared Mounts, Tom's co-host here Jared, on Fishing the DMV. And, really appreciate um, you for that. So, I, and because of that, you know, and I know in the thumbnails and stuff, I got a little bit of heat from uh, this woman here about like, well, this is technically not my first tournament. It's like, yeah, but the other one, it's like. Right. But that one we didn't stay for like both days. Yeah. Because the first day we were like, something's wrong with the truck. Like something's going on. So we should probably head back early. Also, the first day we caught nothing well, like the boat after. was sinking too the boat was sinking we were was having a, a lot of problems we caught nil so we were just like let's just go home like just cut our losses let's go and then of course on our way home on sunday it just the truck explodes so it gets to this event here and so we we get there we get there for the event and so we're on the upper potomac uh this is this tournament was going out of big slack believe it or not um which is one of the main dams on the upper potomac river and it backs up all the way to williamsport um and i was just i thought this would be a really good event for you because even though the weights are low so usually generally speaking seven to eight pounds is a big bag there 
and we can get in the whole conservation ecological side of things where that is so sad that like for a place like this and i, I love a comment that you said on the boat it's like these fish are so tiny compared to the ones on tv it's so small and it's like well we weighed the them and i great. thought for sure like after it's, what i heard people you know all tom's like all oh, this fish is massive and i'm like yeah it's big it made the rod like bow in half this is awesome curtis i promise you're not being replaced yet you're not being replaced we just have a backup <laughs> no, in case no, you're ever no, out no, of town no, you can keep him okay <laughs> that net job we're gonna get there oh my, uh, yeah anyway continue <laughs> okay so anyway with thomas like all oh, these fish are massive oh the fight is so you know intense all right so we finally get him on the boat the first one it's okay um and he weighs it and it's like 2.5 pounds or something and i'm thinking wait a minute i thought like a normal like large fish is like you know solid like seven eight pounds or something and that's just what i expected the scale to say well there's something about the size too i mean if i pull up something that's this big it's not going to weigh 10 pounds uh so there's the, the mass and the density but i agree with what you're saying there the place is not great um but there's a lot of fish there's a ton of fish and this will be a place that you can actually catch something and i and i didn't expect this to do really well because it, it's a, it's a hard place to crack plus like what what is the definition of good look when you're at a competition like that where it's basically all or nothing huh. these events guys again if you want to come i think uh you know people in the comment section please help me out whoever runs this organization too please get a hold of me so i can promote you guys it's kind of feels like a shady drug <laughs> deal like where you'd buy weed in college because I don't know who to talk to. You just show up at the boat ramp at like show four. Like, and I don't look, even know if this is still happening. You look for the right dude and you tap your foot three times and he taps his foot three times and you give him money. But that's how it works. And it's $20 to enter. Not a lot of money. And it's basically they pay out big fish, I believe, and just first place. And that's yeah. it. Fun event. Really good. I just wish I knew who put it on and I, and I could promote you guys. Um, so, you know, we show up there. I didn't think like no one ever thinks you're going to win, but it's like you can't even worry about, oh, if I get a top five, I cash money. It's just more like you go there. It's 20 bucks. It's just to have fun. How many boats would you say there were? Because I'd say like 15. Yeah, 15. Like at least 15 to 20. I That's think. what I would say. Yeah. yeah. I felt like 20 stretching it. But honestly, like, there were a lot of us just like mm -hmm. waiting for takeoff. So it was and great. And then we got, uh, we got uh, maybe Carly should be your new partner. Yes. <laughs> that would yes! be great. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank yeah. you jenny carly is the old carly is the old man queen now at this point um we'll get to that part of the story anyway so um yeah you get to be part of your first blast off right that was fun and so we get in the boat turn everything on and again there was some kind of weird ghost i guess in the boat she was eating a banana by the way so i will say that because all my electronics I hadn't had dinner yet all of my electronics would not work none of my electronics would turn on at all big motor was fine trolling motor was good went back there i checked all the batteries they said they were full no issues nothing would turn on but we still have the big engine we still have the trolling motor. It's like, all right cool we're except be fine. while we're piddling around waiting for takeoff mm -hmm. the big engine starts screaming at oh, us right, with right. that loud beeping noise and we had to turn the engine off twice i'm like thomas i thought your boat was fine it was functioning fine when you went out with your co-angler and he's like yeah it's just you so i'm feeling real confident real great i, I love how you, how your comment in that day was really like I thought everything was working and it's like okay that really just puts salt into it i thought the thing that you enjoy more than everything was working for you it's like no i guess no this like most of my dreams are sure broken. i also said we'll get you a new boat don't worry honey yeah but okay well, unless you're selling your feet on like one of those websites you ain't getting a new boat anytime I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> but anyway it was just it, it had a clog we fixed that no problem we blast off we go to our first spot um yeah and then i gave you this bait here and this is the fun part of the story here that you can start getting into when we get to our first spot and then i put a rod in i put a rod in your hand and uh okay, this so was an, this, this was one. an issue on my this fault is what it looked like first all right so I think it was this one. Oh, you're right maybe it was that one too. no it looked like this one yeah. first this was the second one because i lost this one. do you want to hold it up to the camera to show everybody okay so what we have here it's a ned rig Hold it up okay. to the hold it to the camera so all the people that would like to buy it could see it. There you go. Okay. Well, hold it for a little bit longer. Cole needs to see it. I'm gonna hold my hand up high. Okay. There you go. Okay. So this is a Ned rig. Uh, and prior to us departing on Thursday, Thomas actually went to Dick's Sporting Goods and purchased me a brand new rod, um, and said, "Here you go, honey. This is gonna be your rod for the day." So I'm feeling, you know, real taken care of set. And then he basically tells me how to cast it, what to do with it, let it 
chill around on the bottom and then pop it up every once in a while and keep the rod tip up and all, all of that jazz. So I'm doing that. All right, first cast, I kind of get stuck on something. So he has to get it unstuck for me, right? Then he casts it out for me because he usually, if he gets it unstuck, he just casts it for me and hands me back the rod. All right, so then I'm just doing my little thingy. Get stuck again, but for, like, I just don't quite understand yet, like, the feeling between, like, a fish, like, taking it and then me getting it stuck. So I'm just like, well, I might as well set it. Snap! The rod breaks in half. On the second cast, it just breaks right in half. And I'm thinking, this is really great. Like, the electronics weren't working, the engine was screaming, and I broke my brand new rod. Like, this, he's never going to invite me back out on the boat ever again. This is so, the end. So, to be fair, it was a... It was a fifteen dollar rod from Dick's Sporting Goods that was fifty percent off. He didn't tell me that. Um, well, I just, I yeah, and uh, and we won like gift cards at a gaming competition, Ugh. so we had money uh, available to do. So it was like I had gift cards I had to burn. I saw that there was some discounts on fishing stuff, so I'm gonna say like, let's go see if we get a cheapo uh, for her, and we did. Um, and we and we were able to. And honestly, that was that was the funniest part was the fact that you know. I got her a cheap rod knowing like there's a 50% chance she's going to break some shit. Uh, and I have a faulty rod because oh, it's not a faulty rod. You broke the damn thing. I'm not that you strong. You were doing bullshit. You handle an 800 pound animal. You ride horses. <laughs> I'm not that strong. <laughs> Within six casts, you snap the rod. Like two. Eight, two. <laughs> that's the point is that something's wrong with the rod. Okay? So clearly the person that works out like, that's why times. it was on sale for fifteen dollars. Okay, Blaine China. Uh, yeah. To continue with the story, we're off to a great start now. All right. So anyway, um, and he just starts he just starts reeling them in, but they're like this thick. And for those of you who are only listening to this podcast, it's about three inches. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, so cute. Good job, babe. So okay. she's really not helping at all on an emotional level or a physical level or a catching level. She's just breaking shit, eating stuff and getting snagged. Um, and this is also a fault. If you guys have kids at home or a wife or both, Rude. a Ned rig or a small jig is probably not the best thing to actually start them with. I made the mis mistake. I had an idea that, you know, these baits that I was specifically throwing were actually very hot. It was a good technique at the time, but there's a lot that goes into fishing this thing. It, it takes really good sensitivity in the rod and being able to actually feel the bite. Um, what we were throwing, um, I think this is an, this is an, this is a, a, a all tech an all tech tungsten head. Uh, I got these at Jake's bait and tackle. You, know, you can shop there online you, and you can buy them pretty much anywhere. But what I really like about this is you can get them in one eighth ounce and you get, I think it's like 30, 32 seconds of an ounce, something like that. A really light style head. 32 seconds. 30, 32, 32ths of an ounce. I'm going to link it in the episode description okay. because I got shit on for the jig episode where it's like, that's five sixteenths, not five six. It's like, all right, you know what? Google it. It's right there. Anyway, going with this micro Ned head and a micro tiny two really was the key for this. But to do that, you needed a super light head to throw this bait and you needed a rod to match it. And that was going with a, a medium light rod with an extra fast tip. And then we're going with between five pound test and eight pound test sunline fluorocarbon leader. That was to be able to feel this thing. That's a very, very specific technique. And then I handed that to her being yeah. like, this is going to work out lovely doing this. And that really was my fault being in the boat thinking like, okay, maybe throwing, giving this to her when the weather conditions weren't really good. It was really windy um, out. It was when we got to Choppy. our first spot, the wind was blowing the opposite direction of the river. Mm -hmm. And so what that creates is it creates two different types of current. You have the wind current that's on the surface level. It only goes down probably about a foot. Mm -hmm. And that's going to blow the boat, the line. It's going to rehab it on the bait. And then you have a little bit of current from just the regular river system going the opposite direction. Right. And so it really makes feeling the bait pretty difficult. And so I really do blame myself for your early issues. And so we lost probably about $100 worth of jig tackle um, by her holding the rod straight up. And instead of feeling it, just dragging it on the bottom until it got snagged. Uh, so that worked out really well. Yes. Three thirty seconds. Thank you. Thank you that word right there. Uh, you never bring a banana on a boat. Rule number one, starter started all your padlock. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Brittany. Yeah. I didn't know that. I was hungry. You could have asked me. I, I just see you hungry. deep throwing the banana while the engine went and started. Like, all right, this is going to actually is start real well. Real? Is that okay? Yeah, it is. Why do you think she brought it up? I don't know. <laughs> it's a thing. 
I did not. Know oh that. my God. Or it could just be you. It could be one of those things too. David says uh, hey, Thomas, can you turn the audio up just a bit for the hearing channels? Absolutely. That's again, no problem there. Boom. We are now up a lot Done. higher. How's that? Yeah. Better? Hopefully that's a little bit better for everybody. Um, so anyway, we get, we get that situated. And then this is what really about the story that I think is really fascinating is the first hour. And, and really, this event really is from like five, six, seven, and then and eight. So you're talking about maybe what, three hours, right? Three to four hours to actually fish. Blast off was at three five. Yes, yeah, three hours. Well, the first, the first hour. Sorry, the comment section here, guys, is just I very know, like it's blowing up a uh, little bit. Yes, it's a thing. All right, bananas. Now I know. Yeah, yeah. Now you know. My bad. Um, so anyway, to continue. So the first hour of the event really is me being so patient not to commit a homicide um and then also babysitting mm -hmm. you trying to keep patient and he was teach so you. good he was so patient he never and rolled his eyes or like huffed once not when i broke the rod not when i lost his bait it was so good. i did keep i did really good i did teach children for like 18 years of my life so i, I do have the built-in patience but I, but I say this for a point here that's it's a difference between uh, no, children yeah. and your wife but no Just but saying. it's still kind of the same too where it talks about patience patience in general patience with kids patience with your wife in in all these situations and i see this with a lot of 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 men and adults where they put themselves in situations and your vibe will create a positive experience or a negative experience. For so sure. if you're going to go out there and you're going to go teach a kid to fish or your wife or both, put them in a situation where they're going to have success, put them in a situation where they're going to have a positive outcome with that. Mm -hmm. um, the conditions were not perfect for a beginner at, at the beginning of the day. And so I do regret her starting with this technique off. So then what we went to, um, she was still fiddling around with that and i wanted to get something to put something in her hand that was a little bit more efficient for a regular angler to use and you could put that up right now also he called this an active bait he says you're moving that bait around too much you clearly want something to like do while you're fishing so we went to oh hold on there you go okay mm -hmm. all right that's called the jerk bait ladies and gentlemen that is a jerk bait yeah and uh he taught me how to use that and i Took about 20 minutes, but I think I eventually got the hang of it. I actually got really what do you, good at casting. What do you too. call a person that doesn't have rhythm? Oh what do you mean a person that doesn't have rhythm? Because I for this bait, you jerk it in the water. Well, I had to and figure watching it out. you jerk it is just like jerk it, and you're like, uh, uh. Okay, that at again, first. I'm not and eventually, strong. eventually, as she breaks a rod and loses a lot of tackle, you're not strong. Yeah. Don't you hop off a horse at a gallop and make it turn? Yeah. And you're not strong enough to like move a bait in the water. Look at these bruises. Oh my god, yeah. that's not from me getting mad at her for breaking my rod. By the way, that's from the horse. That's not horses. <laughs> just, just in case the FBI is listening. Um, so I put that in her hand. A lot better results. You started to catch a couple of dinks. You saw one chase the bait up. Remember? Yeah, yeah. And that's when I started to feel really confident. I was like, oh, okay, this bait's gonna be the winner for me. Like this is actually because I felt absolutely nothing on these little ringy dingers. I know, except logs and rocks Except and shit. logs and rocks and tires and whatever's down there yes so for the jerk bait um i brought in just a, a teeny tiny little one at one point like four or five inches and then another one at like uh 11 and a half inches and then it's getting later in the day oh we forgot about the fish you caught oh i know we're gonna get there i just want to finish that that sentence off first while i get this up here well we didn't switch baits until it was like we were done in like 40 ish minutes. <laughs> that is a private comment in the private chat that uh, we will talk about later. Um, anyway, so I think this is the best time that we can actually, oh, we got a couple of comments here while we get back into this, the story of Carly's first event. Um, good man, great. What's up? Oh, clown color. Looks oh, like that, a clown, yeah. honestly. So, I'll hold it up again. That right there, I'm going to put the link in the episode description to this. It is a chrome clown color. It's a gold. I'm not, let me, can I see it real quick? That's gold, right? That's a little bit of gold. I think it's it, it, Yeah, it's a silver gold silver tint. Because when you and yellow. really, it's almost like that dress. To me, it looks like on the side, it has a little bit of gold to it. It's like but yellow yeah, on the top and it, silver it's in the a, middle. It's a clown chrome. It's a clown chrome color. I, when you're fishing with anybody and you want to get bit when you're dealing with spotted bass, or smallmouth. I'm saying like you just want to get bit, and it's a person that maybe doesn't fish a lot. Go with the hottest color jerk bait you possibly can. Mega bass, Jennifer. That is a great guess. This is Jennifer. not. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, Jennifer, That's Jenny. Jenny. I'm Jenny sorry. Meyer. I'm also blind. 
Uh, Jenny, this is actually a Strike King. This is the Strike King, uh, a chrome clown color. Uh, I I think Mega Bass is a great bait. I still I bought so many Strike King jerk baits when I was in college, and I was well, what they call poor, and I couldn't afford a twenty twenty two dollar Mega Bass. And I really thought financially, I could buy two or three Strike King jerk baits on Black Friday or Memorial Day sale from Tackle Warehouse back in the day versus one Mega Bass. Now, granted, Mega Bass is still a better bait, but when I saw a deal, that's just what I that's what I just did. Um, so anyway, she started out with that. And then when it comes to the tournament itself, the first hour after that got done with, I actually tried to settle down. I started to think really more about fishing. And so we were going along this main, main shoot of the, uh, of the river and I was throwing my little jig out there. And all of a sudden I, I pull back on one. I catch one. It's about 13 inches. It's not, this was the smallest one I think of the day actually was the first one we caught. No. Um, yeah, it wasn't the biggest one. That one we're going to get to. So, cause it was the, I knew it was, it was the medium size one. It was the meat. Yeah, no, cause you're you, the smallest one you caught second. I smallest one I caught was first. I know that because we didn't make a big deal about it Fine. because we thought, Agree to disagree. Okay, agree to disagree. Um, so agree to disagree on the first fish, but it was a fish and was caught and it was put in the live well. It was very pretty. Because we were talking about maybe not even weighing it in because we only have one. There's no big deal. Because who cares? Okay. And then what happens after the first one we catch, we are going down this stretch and I figured out something a little sneaky looking at my forward facing center or my 360. That started working. Was. And it did. Yeah, that's a good point of the story is, is as soon as we laid, as soon as it laid down, some do like it. What is going on here in the chat? Some do like them as much. Oh, I was going to say Western, Western clown. clown. All right. Thank you, Jake's bait and tackle. So anyway. <laughs> um, now that he knows who you are. <laughs> I'm going to take a little sip of my beverage here. Sorry. So anyway, it's a main flat that usually all the fishing was done. It's just a little bit shallower part of the river. And what I was figuring out is looking at optics and stuff is these fish are actually in the deeper channel basically. And so we just moved out about six or seven feet off the spot. And I was making casts in the deeper part while you were working the jerk bait over the flat shallower part. Yeah. And the flat was probably between like four to three feet deep, something like that. So, and I was fishing between eight to six feet, like roughly. And again, like I was throwing my setup with this thing was a medium light rod and I had 12 pound uh, sunline braid and I took that to five pound test fluorocarbon leader and I was casting that thing out there and I was just barely just dragging it on the bottom. Second one we catch is a little bit better yeah. um, from my understanding because that was that was one where you got the net. We thought it was a walleye or something like that. It was we thought it was something. Oh my Crazy. gosh, this is the first time I ever netted a fish. Yeah, ever. and this is the first one you netted, remember? Because that, that's why the first yeah. one was the smallest. I know, I was so excited. Because we didn't net the first one. Oh. I just boat flipped it. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's okay. You're welcome. That's why I remember things. Um, so that one we got in, and that one was a really good one. That one was bigger than the one I caught with, with Cole last week. That one was really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And so I actually have that one here. If you want to keep talking, talk about your net job. No, I feel as though I did pretty well with it. But um, I also have a question for our viewers because you didn't know the answer to this. If I were to net said fish, but also fall out of the boat while doing it, would we still, would that still be legal? And can we keep the fish? Or at that point, do we have to toss the fish back because I fell into the water to get it? I'm pretty sure if a woman falls over the side of the boat, they would be okay with that. I think they would not think. That... I don't think they care what the sex is. True. That is also true. But I feel like if a, if, if, if two guys, if Carl and Randy and Randy said, like, I jumped out and I caught a fish. It's like, you, how did you cheat? What'd you do? You yeah, but I was willing to go yeah. into the water for but, it. But if you tripped and fell over and then. <laughs> I can do that. And then we have Connor. Uh, like... Lonnie Connor says it's legal. I can do that. So now, you know. Now I know. That I will go in the water for a fish. You will go in the water for a fish. I cannot believe where the heck. Oh, there it is. Cool. Uh, get, I'm just going to send this to myself. That way I can share this on screen. Okay. That's a really small fish. Yeah, I know. But that was, anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that fish because okay. that, that fish is I'm important. I'm not proud of that one. No, you should be because it's important in the story. It's a very important fish in the story. Okay. Anyway, so I felt as though I was doing great at the netting and um, 
Tommy, the first one that he um, caught, he was like, oh, this is a big one. And it, he took forever to bring it even close to the boat. We couldn't even see it for a while. And um, eventually we finally get it and then we like net it and then we put it in the boat and we're super duper excited. We're like, all right, we've got like, two hours left. We're we're good to go. We're rocking and rolling now because he had already like caught like three or four other fish, but they, they were too small to keep. And that one was the one that was like two pounds something, right? So this is what's interesting about, about, I think, formulating a pattern, having execution, and just remembering how things work out is right. earlier, like 20 minutes earlier in the day, we, I decide to like, we're going to, we're going to set up a drift on the deeper section in yeah. this area. Yeah. And we start the drift all the way down yeah. and we catch one immediately. We had that thought process. It's funny because you told me after the fact, something very interesting, but I'll, I'll say my part first and you can, you can chime in with this. Now I'm like, okay. Let's re I'm going to reset the drift. I'm like, set everything down. We're going to reset the drift. And we're going to set right back up to where we were. And so I set right back up. And that's interesting because you just, you were thinking if, if, if I'm correct, it's like, oh, we're leaving, but we just caught one. Yeah. Um, and so I just thought that was interesting. Like you didn't even say that at the moment. It was just thinking like, oh, we should stay in the area, yeah. which is exactly what I was going to do. It was like, okay, th these fish are off deeper. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to reset the drift, but I'm going to go off a little bit more because when we initially started the drift, I was a little bit shallower. Mm -hmm. I said, like, let's just start immediately deeper. Mm -hmm. I put the engine down, get up on the front desk. It was the first cast. Mm -hmm. I let that thing, I just whipped that thing out there as deep as I could. I saw on my, um, my 360, I think it was a little bit a bigger boulder or something like that in about six and a half feet of water. Mm -hmm. I pull it over there and it just, it goes solid. I pull back on it. And I swear to God, I thought I had a flathead or a walleye. This was the biggest one. Yeah. Because this is the one that was had all the grass on the line, too. Yeah. And that's right. This, and I had to like pull the grass off the line and yeah. hang it off the side of the boat. Yeah. For the upper Potomac. And you caught it with this, right? Yeah. For the upper with Potomac, the, this, the Ned rig. this thing is uh it's freaking it's a big one. It's it's a really good one. I think this is the one that went like almost two pounds. Two pounds something. Two pounds like two point five i think it was yeah 2.5 um and, and and really the key to success really was something that i learned on one of my interviews uh recently was don't pull so hard on those small mouth um let the drag do its work mm -hmm. and so i really i was using my we went know, back and forth beside the boat like two different times like mm -hmm. went from one side to the other side like like two different times so you're like okay if that's where you want to go and i just kept chasing him with the net and i never saw this fish until it was basically in the net i i never saw this yeah, fish it yeah. was it was dogging the whole time uh i had the drag set perfectly and it's something else i i really suggest to all my listeners that are just starting out um always have your drag set just a little bit tighter when you set the hook and then once you hook the fish you can always dial it back some that's usually what i do so i'll have it set to where i want it to where i know i can set the hook and a little bit of line will come out and then if i have to i'll just dial it back just a little bit more especially in this part of the river where there's nothing around he could just dig for all he wants and especially with these baits here with these little tiny hooks i get when i got in there you're pr you're not probably going to lose them by them jumping and shaking but they can pull off so loosen that drag up and just let him go and mm -hmm. let him go. And so, yeah, I, I fought him, but I'm telling you that works so much better than if you try to haul on this fish with that lighter stuff, just let them wear themselves out and you can bring them to the boat and they won't jump very much. We get this thing close to the boat and it's under the boat the whole time, pretty much. Yeah. And there's grass wrapped around the line. I was worried about that. This is really her second net job in her whole life. I know. Her netting the thing. That's so and this thing comes up to the surface and it's a, it's it's funny because like we're saying it's a big one it's not a four or five pounds it it's big. not a legit i've caught four and five pounds small enough when i went I up know. north but i just meant like to the point is like so this wasn't like oh this is like my pb or you know no, a monster no, no, but no. Yeah. for this place it's like oh my god this is massive yeah and what's interesting is how this changes in the conversation because we put him in the net and there's a there's a mood change and atmosphere change because in tournaments at this place, it only takes six, seven, eight pounds to win. Yeah. And I've been telling you that even before we launched the boat, it doesn't take a lot to win, win some money here. And then all of a sudden we catch that one. It's like, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Holy if shit. We just buy, like if we just get one more of these. We could actually do something here. We could place. And I was like, if we just catch a limit, we'll definitely, I thought like if we caught five, we win period. Right. And if we catch a fourth, we have, we have a That's shot. This size? Yeah, we have yeah. a shot because yeah. this one is a good one. Yeah. Um, 
and but we're losing light now. So right. again, first hour was 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 basically an educational teaching moment would be the PC way of saying it. <laughs> Babysitting would be another way. Uh, Rude. An hour of fishing or about an hour and some change of fishing. Yeah. We're getting up on the clock here. Yeah. And I'm like, well, let's rerun this area. But this was a really cool bait change. What what did I tie on your line? And then afterwards. Okay, we probably had 45 minutes left of like actual fish time. And then Tom's like, I'm going to give you the spy bait. Straight. All right, there you go. So that's what we that's what he tied on Tell me about that to bait. my rod. Well, I really liked this bait. It fit my personality. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> my personality it meant <laughs> that i just got to cast it and reel it baby cast it and reel it and that's all i had to do and as long as i had it going at a certain speed i was like this this is working for me and tommy kept asking me can you feel the bait can you feel the bait i didn't know what that meant when i was throwing this sucker the ned rig i did not know what that meant i was like i feel catching a lot of things down at the bottom lots of grass yes so then when I finally ended up throwing the spy bait, I knew exactly what he meant when he said, can you feel the bait? Oh, hold on. Take the memory. There you go. Can you feel the bait? And then I was like, yeah, I can actually feel it now. I actually like felt a couple little like nibbles and bites. And then I was like, oh, I got to slow it down a little bit so the fish can actually catch it. And then I just, I kept whipping it. And um, eventually I started bringing them in. And the first one I brought in, it was very, very exciting. And um, that one was 11 and a half inches. So half an inch too short to keep in the boat. And that's but, where the fire but, but that's, this, was uh, burning. But not to, to cut you off, but like that was what's interesting is like this was your first fish that you caught landed on this bait. Yes. That's why I said like this is an important picture is because your mindset changed after this fish. Yeah. You understood the bite. Yeah. You understood how to make it work. I knew what it your, felt like. Your intensity really changed after you you caught this fish. Yeah yourself yeah and i remember you you holding the reel and you're just like i think i got one and you just like just cranking on that thing like a wild person it's wow. like you can fight the fish if you want you don't have to drown him he had to talk me through that because um, i usually just like freeze in terror but apparently you're supposed to keep reeling yeah freezing in terror is not the best thing while fishing <laughs> um and so but and this was such a unique thing let's go back just from really the strategy at that point as it got darker out, got closer to eight o'clock, actually this bite was dying. I caught probably four more fish, but they were all, way too but they were all like 10 inches. No, um, I had one pull off that felt pretty good, but I didn't get a good hook in him um, or, was... or I snagged something. It could have been that, but I really felt like it, it moved anyway. So it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, my size was leaving, but your size was picking up where yeah. she, you caught a couple in a row oh that gosh, were they were so close they were so, so close it was like a quarter of an inch to 12 inches and i was like come on catch me a keeper like that's all i was praying for i was like i just want to keep her in this point we have three fish in the live well that we get to take for weigh-in and i'm thinking if we catch a keeper tom's gonna let us get to stay for weigh-in and then we might actually place and who the heck knows so um eventually so so anyway caught but then there was, this was fish. a cool one though was um and this kind of gets into into you caught one short she caught one and she hooked this thing and it jumps immediately and you yelled i got one yeah. um <laughs> and it jumps immediately and this sucker is long and anorexic and i really thought when it jumps like that thing should keep that really should keep and so i this is the first one yeah. i think i really net no, this is the second one i, net I netted for you at this point because yeah. i netted your first one he's terrible. a chunky monkey but he just wasn't playing that and game. he was like what 11 and like a like three quarters like that's the one that was a quarter yeah short. so barely close to being 12 inches and again that was like your third or fourth one you caught i know and then i had an omen and it was and i told her this before and it's like you know if we're gonna do well in this you're gonna catch a key fish and you're like you just jinked it i believe in murphy's law literally he's like well you know if we do well tonight you're gonna catch a fish you're gonna catch a fish and you're gonna get the biggest one in the boat and i was like you can't say that kind of stuff out loud you can think it but you can't say mm -hmm. it out loud otherwise you just jinxed it and it's not gonna happen so i knocked on some wood and then i caught the biggest fish but um spoilers but anyway so, so while i'm reeling in this one that we think is actually large enough to keep thomas shows me that he needs some education when it comes to netting oh uh, because 
my net my net game was not good. I will I, got I will so yeah. mad at him. I was about to just push him off the boat. He straight up is stabbing the water with the net. As I'm like reeling the fish in, I'm like, oh, gotta be all gentle with it. Okay, like steer it in. Tommy just goes, stab, 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 right in the water. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? Because now the fish is just shooting down underneath the boat to get away from the net, trying to grab it. Just keep the net in the water and then just scoop it. But he was so excited and he thought this was a keeper for sure that he just thought if he just stabbed it like a murderer, he was going to get it. Like, he acted like he never netted a fish before. To, to, anyway, it, Curtis Cole, teach him the next time you go out. Maybe, guys, have a conversation. Um, to be fair, my other issue was the first fish that she didn't bring up in the story uh, that, that we caught on the spyway, the one I just showed you the picture of. Um, I brought him in because he was on the outside of the net because when I had it in the water gently, like cradling a baby, <laughs> she missed the net. And the, the treble oh, hook got Michael. yeah the net. And so I had to lift you both in the water. Us both. I Oh, yeah. Sorry. The fish. And so I did a horrific job on this. But my mindset going into it is like, well, if I leave it in the water and that's not in the right position with you, mm. if, the if we lose a fish because he gets hooked on the outside of the net and throws the bait, that's just going to be miserable. And so I thought if I stabbed it, that'd be better. Yeah, he's really worried about this getting caught. This that. I was because it already happened before, but it was on a dinky. And I thought, like, yeah, yeah, I could imagine she catches a six pound smallmouth and it gets hawked on the outside of the net and it's yeah. her best one ever. And it just like says bye and throws. And I'm really screwed. Um, and we're losing light. But so that it, was the first experience with me watching Thomas net. net. And I. So you saw the good and the bad. You I saw me play word, fish perfectly. But then I, I had a word him. with him and I said, maybe get better at this. <laughs> so <laughs> he's like, I did nothing wrong. I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> so then after that fish, literally. We have how many minutes until we, we were running out of time? Real we were quick. running. It was starting to get dark. People were passing us. They were on their way to weigh in. Like they were done for the night, and we're still sitting at the same spot we've been at all night long. And we're just Tom's just like one more cast, one more cast, like he does. And um, eventually, I did that one more cast, and literally, we both said, "Okay, for real, this is the last cast because we've got to head back." So I cast it out there. Thunk! I get it, and I'm like. Tom, I got one. And I just, I'm so serious. Like, I'm feeling it in my knees, and I could feel the weight. In my just, knees? <laughs> literally, like, my knees are shaking. And I'm like, okay, this is it. This is for real. And, like, my chest is starting to, like, contract and get tight. Like, I'm, ha I'm having anxiety because straight up I knew that if we got this in the boat, we could win after everything Tommy's told me. I mean, if he wasn't lying to me, like we could actually win this thing. So I'm reeling in. Finally, like it jumps up out of the water and splashes in. And I just stop reeling for a second time. Goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I keep reeling you again. You just like had an outer body experience. You just stopped to watch the thing. Like it's shamming. I, with the zoo. Like, oh, just, it's pretty. I it's was like convinced as soon as it jumped out, it was going to shake itself free. And we were done. We were yeah, done. There was a lot in that whole sequence. So then I kept going. <laughs> It went to one side of the boat. It went to the other side of the boat. Thomas is stabbing the water with the net before we even see the fish. And eventually I just like, stop stabbing the water. And then finally, like, I think he pretty much jabbed at it three separate times. It kept going down. Missed it every single time. And finally I got up a little bit high enough and then he was able to like, flop it in halfway and then we scooped it in and then pulled into the boat. He picks it up and he goes, okay, this will do it and takes the, the the bait off pretty much throws in a live well and we just start packing. We're like, let's go because we had to like haul out back. It turned out to be the, the second biggest fish. And I think it was it just was almost the biggest by like a couple ounces. Like it was close, but we we weighed both of them and neither one got big fish uh, on the yeah. day. No, we but were it, two ounces. Yeah, but, but the fact is when I saw that one, it was like, holy shit, like that might have done it. Um, and then I and just more context with like the net stuff and just in general, like the fighting also, there's a lot of current. And so yeah. when, the reason these fish also are probably fighting a little bit, yeah. a little bit better too, is like there is current it is a river system. It's not just like a pond. Um, and this is something that I learned afterwards. Uh, if you're fighting a fish in massive current, you hold your net in there, it's going to blow the netting down current of it yeah no shit right yeah. so if the fish is down current and you're pulling it up it's going to hit the mesh netting apparently what you do i know this after the fact is you hold the netting too 
and the net. Ah. So that way you can stick it in the water and the netting doesn't blow down past the hole. So that way the trouble's getting that. So I'm glad I know that now. I really wish I knew it back then. <laughs> but we got that thing in the boat and it was, it was, I remember that these, these weird moments. Like when I caught the biggest one of the day, there's that moment of like, we have a chance. Yeah. When you hooked that one, it was dead quiet in the boat. Like, oh my gosh, this... I almost passed out. Literally, yeah. once we got in the boat, like Thomas got in the net, I just like dropped the I, I dropped the fishing rod and I just threw my fists in the air and I was like, yes. And then this boat goes by with these two older gentlemen and they both give me a thumbs up and they go, nice. And I just, I'm 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 unhooking the fish. <laughs> I'm doing the this. tackle. I'm doing everything in the boat at the boat, and she's getting autographs and this like, shit from everyone around her. Me catch a fish. <laughs> Oh my god. Um it's fantastic. So, well the story isn't in there though either, does it? No, it doesn't. Because then we haul ass back and then uh we hook we put the truck or I'm sorry. Uh you get in the truck, I stay in the boat, we put the boat on the trailer, then I get in the truck and then I drive the boat out of the water and then we park and we see a bunch of people walk past with their bags. And it looked like a bunch of people actually did well for the night. Yeah, we thought a bunch of people did well for the night. We were we were guessing the bags and stuff. Um, and then I carry the bag over mm -hmm. to the weigh in with you. Mm -hmm. We weigh it, and then everyone was like, "I think you just did this." Mm -hmm. So this Everybody's is what, like, this is what's fun about that at this point because the story keeps going here, and there's a part of the story that we need to to, to circle back to. Um, she was the rock star because I left to like take care of the boat, the car, all that stuff. I just hung around and then and you have claimed about, what like, was mine. 80... <laughs> Shit. You have like 80 year old men all around you. Like it's like a kiss concert. Just Give me a high five, shaking my hand. And did they ask uh did they ask you for your well, number or to be your partner? My pink jersey. No, nobody did. Oh my gosh, we forgot to say what happened at the beginning. That's what I was gonna say. We we're gonna bring that up too. Oh, so I'll bring that up I now. I forgot about that. So right before we end up. <laughs> right That's confidence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all fake. So <laughs> right before we end up putting the boat in the water, Thomas just paid for our entries, right? And then we drive to the boat ramp. And after he paid the guy cash, the, ca the guy comes running up to the boat. And he's like, hey, hey, you. You got a kid in the in the truck with you, right? Meanwhile, I'm sitting in the front seat, and the closer he gets, the more you can see like his face is like, oh, this is an adult woman, not a child. And he goes, I thought for sure you guys had a kid in the boat. Tom goes, Nope, no children here. And I'm just like, hi. And <laughs> he's like, I'm so sorry. And he Hello turns there. around and walks away. And I'm like, Thomas, he thought I was your daughter. Oh, guys, love gals that can fish. This is factually. Jenny would know. Um, and then so that was really, that was kind of your term in the nutshell. And then how much did you win with? How much did I win with? Oh, how, I don't know. How much weight? It was like seven pounds, eight ounces. I don't know. You so, can ask me how much cash I got. I know that. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, that was a pretty good bag. I was actually pretty shocked that we did as well as we did there. Um, yeah. It's a really hard place to fish. I think the really important thing there is really to downsize. I've always had more success when you downsize to even smaller stuff. And this is really a you know, good comparison to your fish there. And then I, what's so funny about this picture is how we're holding each other's fish. So like this was I mine. Know. Yeah. And then this was yours. That was mine. Mm -hmm. um, I just think so where they were holding each other's fish, but like that's, and I don't think this picture does it just has to have big ears was. No, like, it it was, big, especially when it was jumping. You with were the standing behind me too, obviously. Look how far back you yeah. are from behind me. Like just ignore my hair, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was, that was, I was really, you, you should be really proud of yourself. And, and I had again, a lot of fun. I want to do it again. I do, well, yeah, but you think you're going to win every single time. Um, everyone better. asked me about this stuff and I get a lot of hate mail over it about the spy bait and the jerk bait. I throw both of them. What I found out really, this is easy. This is what you do. If you throw this and you don't get bit, you throw this. That's our TED Talk. If you don't catch them on this, you go to this. It's basically that. A, a spy bait is just almost a finessier version of the jerk bait. Yeah. I really like a the chartreuse color one for smallmouth. Um, and what I did with her is I set up a, I think it was saying those 12 pound braid, but I set up a, oh God, what was that mono? I used 12 pound monofilament leader. And the reason I used mono a 12 pound mono leader is it helps float this thing a little bit higher in the water column because we were fishing relatively shallow water. Again, you were like in four to three feet of water. And I was trying to keep this thing up because yeah. I gave my wife treble hooks. 
So I didn't want to actually lose this bait. And I didn't want to tell her, God love her soul, that this thing was the most expensive thing that we had in the boat uh, <laughs> at the time. Uh, what did Jane say? Don't be a hater. I mean, I'm only watching them tonight because of Carly. I know, I know. I got, we hey, listen, right it. now I got 3% uh, female demographic thanks to her. So I'm going to milk that for all it's worth. Uh, spy bait is a really good pick. And when we talk about the Ned rig and downsizing, like, so this was a regular size Ned rig. And this was the size that I was going to, to get the bigger bites. It was really just going to that smaller size and it worked. And I spent four weeks figuring out the right size. I went to a medium, I went from a medium heavy rod. At the specific body of water is yep. what you're talking about? All the times I kept practicing. So I started out with an ultralight. Cause mm -hmm. that's what I use in my Creek fishing is I use this kind of setup here. I cut it down a little bit more and I use my ultralight BFS setup. And I also use an ultralight, um, spinning rod. I have good success in creeks, no issues. But when I was here and I was making longer cast deeper water, I could not get a hook in them. So then I immediately went from an ultralight to a medium. I think it was like a mid power action drop shot rod. Uh, it's the Shimano one. I don't know all the numbers because it's like 50 numbers to explain every Shimano model, but it's a Shimano drop shot rod. I'll put that in the description, but that didn't work at all either. Then I finally went to a medium light rod and that was the deal where I had enough backbone to set the hook on them, but it was light enough in the tip with that medium light action. I could cast it out there and feel this super duper light thing. The other bait that I had, but it's actually in the boat right now is a little bucktail jig, yeah, that one. brown one. It was really, really, a really good bait. Um, but I just never caught a keeper on it. So I really don't think I should. Oh, and this one, the Panther. and this right here is the Panther Martin. This one caught a bunch of little ones too. Um, Gold blade, black finish, really good for small mouth. And it's fantastic in those situations where you're just trying to get bit and you're calling through dinks. So, and I'm showing you, I didn't catch a keeper on this one or the jerk bait, but again, I, I would suggest trying to go with that Panther Martin or jerk bait still, cause you still could have a uh, success with it. Right. Yeah. And that was your first tournament in a nutshell. Yeah. So really to kind of finish up the, uh, the, the topic for today, we're going to go to the Kevin Van Dam stuff. I think this is quite fascinating. I kind of want to get into it here. Carly, what do you know about Kevin Van Dam? I recognize the name. I would have thought that he was a brand of baits. <laughs> he is a brand of baits. You're right. They've made many baits about him. I do a couple of videos for Jake's Bait and Tackle every week, and I've heard the name in passing. Oh, actually, this is a good point. So if, as you guys know, I'm actually on Inst uh, Fishing DMV is on Instagram. It's on TikTok. It's on it's on every single platform. Yeah, um, I am editing hour to two hour long pieces of content three times a week and setting up interviews and doing interviews. And so I don't have time to do every single platform. So she handles my TikTok and a lot of my Instagram, but then she also handles Jake's bait and tackles, Facebook, Shorts. their Instagram, um, their uh, only fans, all that stuff. Yeah. All that short form content as well. So, you know, she also really helps with the short form content because I just don't have enough time to do every single piece on all those media platforms. It is my specialty. It is her specialty. So you are talking from a place of like, you've seen a lot of baits is my point. Oh yeah. Saying that. Kevin Van Dam. So he's had over 26 wins. He's had over 125 top tens, multiple angler of the years, eight, over $7 million in winnings. And this is where I think this is seven a million, $7 million. And I think this was, this is fun because we got into a heated little argument about this beforehand. So big tournament happened yesterday up in Michigan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kevin Van Dam's last tournament media is all big about it. It's his last tournament. He's going to be fishing. He was fishing this whole year. Everyone knew this, this year was his last year. And this is the last tournament of his last year and going into it during the event, he was doing very well. And as you can tell right here, Matt Beckard won this event. And he also, I believe, won Angler of the Year. Comment section, let me know if that's correct. Who is he? Uh, Matt Becker, he's an angler. How long has he been fishing? I don't I don't know his whole Wikipedia page, but the, but, but the point for the conversation is... Does everybody know Matt Becker? Like everyone knows Kevin Van Dam? No. Okay. So Matt had 40 pounds. Kevin Van Dam ended up with 35. Mm. So here's the thing that I think. It, in this situation, if I was Matt... This is a hot take, but this is me personally. I wouldn't have gone super hard the last two days. I would have tried to let Kevin Van Dam win. And what I mean by that is this. I'm not saying I throw the towel. I just dial it back a little bit. And the reason I say that is I don't think people are going to go away from this event if I was him thinking like, ooh, I just won this event. The bigger story is not that I won stop seven on the MLF 
The bigger story is this is Kevin Van Dam's last tournament. So already I'm going to kind of get lost in the wash here. And if Kevin Van Dam has a chance to win his last tournament ever, that's a hell of a story. And I, I don't know. I just always think like if, if, if you were racing in NASCAR and, and a legend was, was about to win it. And then you just come out of nowhere and just swat it out of his hands. People aren't necessarily going to remember you in the books as the guy that won that thing. It's still the story. The narrative is going to be, well, it was his last event. And so to me, I would have dialed back a little bit, I think, especially in major league fishing where you get to see all the weights, you see, you get to see what's happening. Yeah. However, like Matt Becker's working just as hard as Kevin Van Dam. Mm -hmm. He's just supposed to like give up his first place. No, I'm not. Somebody's retiring. That's already won $7 million. I'm not saying give up his first place. I'm just saying you don't go as hard in the paint. How do you know he didn't? That's true. That's true. I don't know. That's why we have these conversations. Yeah. Because if we just like, oh, how do we know he did? It's like, all right, problem solved, done. We're done for that, guys. Great. We're not going to argue about it. So the same thing is what you're saying is you would, if you were Matt Beckard, you would just try to just go for it. Don't matter. I think it would if I'd never won before and I was competing just like everybody else was, especially if I like came out of the woodwork and was like from nobody. At the end of the day, like I'm also competing and putting all of my time, energy, and money into this competition i'm not just going to hand it to somebody who's about to retire yeah i i i really way more media on kevin van dam than becker his win was very little media his win was drowned out by kevin van dam but he still gets the winnings uh, he still gets the winnings but uh, he still gets the sponsorships he still gets whatever you win at the end of the okay. day which maybe he needs that to continue you know i i so let me know in the chat if you guys have played baseball. This is the best analogy I could do because it comes close to home. Okay. Do you know what a perfect game is? No. Perfect game happens where if a pitcher goes out there and 27 outs is what's in the game. You... Outs? Oh, outs. I thought you said ounces. You know when I was dating, I was teaching baseball and I played it. So I, I hope you, you know anything. 27 ounces. Outs in I a game. I understand now. Okay. What's, what's three times nine? 27. Outs. 27 ounces. Okay. So... She's spot on. Every, everyone's like with Carly here. Oh my God. Okay. Everyone's a Carly. Yes! Okay, let, let me finish my point here. So if you are in baseball and you're a pitcher and you pitch a perfect game, that means you had 27 outs in a row. No one got to first base. No one did. The thing that sucked always in baseball, and we always talked about this in the locker room, is if you had to be the dude to go up there and you were the last out, what would you do? Cry. So, no, like sometimes people say, like, you try to bunt, you try to slash at it. You just try to mess up his perfect game. The, oh, there are some people that like just mess it just up. Give any, just get anything. Just you can. do anything just to mess up the perfect game. Yeah. And and there's this this talk and, and we always and this was just like, you know, when you're did you have these hypotheticals in your head? Like, oh, what would you do? Would you try to would you try to do that where you just try to bunt slash you do anything just to mess up the perfect game? Mm -hmm. And to me, I just wouldn't want to be in that situation because if it's a context of like it's this guy's last game pitching. And he's at a perfect game. And then you're the last out. Do you really want to be the guy who's like, oh, I messed it up. I That's feel different good because you're no. not winning the game for your team. You're still losing. This is a win. No, but it's still, it talks about legacy and it talks about just the moment. Like, is this moment about you or is it the moment about him? Yeah. If I'm breaking up the perfect game, I'm trying to make that moment in this context. I feel like I'm, it's more about me. I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm going to try to do everything to, to, to mess up this guy's this guy's moment that's a jackass move well and that's just the kind of way i take it if if kevin van dam somehow has a chance to win the very last event i i believe ooh, wait, wait, we got a good comment here i believe in order for becker to win aoy he had to win that tournament also that is some very good information and i bet a bunch of people because i have like 30 text messages right now are probably saying the same thing however matt becker had of dialed it back then he probably would not have won oh that's such an interesting context there but still i don't know if it's kevin van damme's last event that's just what's so weird to me i don't know if i would dial it back a little bit more because that's what's so interesting to me is but like he had to make a name for himself i i know but he, but in fish in this fishing group they tell you the scores as the day goes on mm -hmm. if this was bass 100 i have nothing there because like you don't know you fish as hard you don't know right. you don't know where it ends up okay. but if, if everyone says like hey kevin van damme's a pound behind you I don't know. It's just, I would fish differently. I think it's like, I might let him have that one. I might dial it well, back a Jesse little bit. Jesse Wiggins probably fished differently. 
who the hell? What are you? Oh, okay. She's looking at the screen beside me. Like, third, what the third hell place. are you talking about? Jesse Wiggins came in yep. third place. Todd Faircloth probably fished differently, but not Matt Becker. They got somebody else. Everyone, everyone's, everyone's with you, basically. Everyone's all Matt Becker. Matt Beckard, Matt Beckard, Matt Beckard. And you are so sentimental. This guy has the biggest heart. The biggest heart in all the world. Tommy is mushy. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> He's so, so sweet. But at the end of the day, if you are in... <laughs> Thank you, David. See, David knows. He said, oh, I was going to read it for the listeners. I, you know, I he just said you've got a big heart, Thomas, but I don't completely agree with you. Buddy. No, you, you good. You're good. No, it's, it, it's okay. It's you're allowed a, yeah. to disagree with him. He yeah, no, it's, it's okay. Becker had to finish top five. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'm just saying like in my perspective, it's, it's, I could never be the guy to try to be up there to be the last out and just like purposely try to break up a guy's perfect game. Yeah. It's like, at that point, it's like, I don't want that. It's like, you did your thing. I'm not just going to mess it up just to mess it up. And so if yeah. Kevin Van Dam could have gone out winning his last event, it's like, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be that would have been in your food head. for your soul because Absolutely. no one would have been upset if that happened. To no, him. if Becker, everyone would have said rightfully so. Yeah. If Becker loses that, it's like, okay, it's, Ke it's Kevin Van Dam's tournament anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's, oh my God, his last event ever. He wins it, blah, right. blah, blah, right. all the accolades and shit. And so like, I, I feel like there's no pressure on you losing that. No, which is weird. Isn't that weird? Like there's no pressure on you losing. There's pressure on you winning. Yeah. And that's so weird. Like example in horses, my team is really good. Um, Border Patrol, there's no pressure on us winning, but there's a lot of pressure on us losing, if that makes sense. If Border Patrol wins, it's like, yeah, of course. Right. But if we lose, it's like, what the hell happened? Carol Ann, what'd you do wrong? Right, right. Did you what miss a handoff, Carol Ann? Carol Ann, like... did you miss a handoff? Um, or, or something like that. Um, Linda, did you miss a handoff? <gasps> did you forget what team you're writing for? Stop it. But but the point is, if that happens, you see what I'm saying? It's like one is yeah. it's just such a weird um angle versus winning versus losing. And for and for and for Matt, yeah, I mean for Becker, he was playing with house money. Lonnie agrees with you. I'm with Thomas. It would have been a great way to finish and would have gained a lot of respect for the older guys. Yeah, it's just it, and and that's something else. Like, let's say it's not Kevin Van Dam, let's say it's Rick Clun. Rick Clun right now, he's still fishing professionally, and he's like, is he in his 80s? I want to Rick Clun. I want to get his I want to get his age right, not just guess out of my ass right now. Uh age, because he's still fishing. 77. 77. Okay, so so Rick Clun is 78, 78, 77 years old. Oh, July 24th. Yeah, okay. Um if he's in if, if Rick Clun is in second place by a couple of ounces. Same thing mm -hmm. that I'm going to be real gut torn about if I was Becker again, I get you got to do what you do. But to me, it's like, okay, if it's Rick Klon and he's about to win a Derby okay. because I don't think you knew this, but he won a couple of years ago on like the, uh, on St. The St. John's. Okay. And when he won, literally the whole field stopped what they're doing. Oh. The whole tournament series so thing shut, shut down. Yeah. Guys went there to help him because the fish weighed too much. So other pros helped him get his fish out of the boat, <laughs> get him on stage. Whoa. People were holding cameras up because he was he was a big idol. And so I thought with Kevin Van Dam, I was like, I really was wondering if, if something like that was going to happen. But anyway, so, you know, th those are those are the thoughts there with that. Um, let's see. David Williams, I'm sure all the pros would love to have you on tour with. Oh, Dave, I agree. Uh, yeah, I, I agree perfectly happy doing this but yeah thank he you. would love it i don't i don't know honestly if, if i yes, especially after listening to the podcast i that's a lot if i made a contract in baseball back in the day you're gone for 10 months out of the year but the baseline contract is like five hundred thousand dollars three hundred thousand dollars roughly around there mm -hmm. fishing is not that way when it comes to the money right. and you're gone just as much if not more so it just doesn't justify it at all. Yeah, but if it was one year and it got you experience, one to year, do something one, that one year would be fun. Before. Yeah, one year would be you're fun. You're that kind of person that just wants to zing zing everywhere, do everything. Zing zing everywhere. Like yes, you know it. You no, always are looking for something new. I would know. love to do the Jeremy Wade thing though. That would be banging. Yeah, Jeremy Wade, where it's just like, all right, we're gonna go to the Nile and go fishing. That yes. would be freaking awesome. Yeah, I want to go. I, I want to go to the North Pole and actually catch um some. Yeah. Anyway, there's there's that. I love that thing. <laughs> If I'm a young broke tournament anchor, uh, this is Phil. Uh, if I'm a young broke That's tournament anchor, I'm saying, all respect Phil. to Kevin Dean, but I'm going to have to nail that coffin shut. That's <laughs> what I'm saying, Phil. Right there with you. Uh, 
Oh my god. Oh my god. That's why. <laughs> like all due respect, but also uh, uh, you worked hard. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm. I got to respond to so many text messages. I'm getting just loaded up. G is. Um, I just love it's a grandpa. I don't care. You're over your time now. No, I abs I absolutely agree with that. I actually agree with that st sentiment right there. Yeah. Um, no, and that kind of get you know, Kevin Dam's career. It's really good. I'm glad it, glad that he made a run with it on his last one. It's just so hard. I think in fishing, I think Hank Parker really did it the best. I I know you're not going to know who that is. Hank Parker won a Bassmaster Classic on the James River a long time ago. I think my fans know what I'm talking about, and he kind of did what um you know John Elway did. Do you know who John Elway is? He was the he was a quarterback for the Broncos in Denver. Oh, sports. Yeah. Mm. Sports. <laughs> <laughs> no. And he won a Super Bowl and he was like, <laughs> I'm out. Peace, guys. Um That's what, what I was, was losing. I'm saying I agree with you, Thomas, but if I was Becker Hammer, yeah. Uh, Hammer, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so weird. I, I think you're right, Looney. But to put yourself yeah. in his shoes. Yeah, that's the thing. Chris, like Becker's career earnings was like three hundred thousand. He just won two hundred thousand yesterday. Jesus, wow, that's crazy. <sighs> that's insane. Yeah, it's so weird. Like, in I sign me up, boys. I'm ready. I would want to know what's going through his head. Are you getting all kinds of text messages? Um, yeah, Billy Cole, he got a photo shoot. Um, yeah, isn't that so weird though? So anyway, um, I'm sorry, just to finish my thought, and then we can kind of wrap up for tonight. Yeah. Um, John Elway, he won a Super Bowl at the top of his game and he basically was like i'm done and we were like wait what we're gonna give you a contract extension and it was like for a ton of money he's like mm -hmm. i'm just done mm -hmm. i'm gonna retire right now on top mm -hmm. and that's so freaking hard to do as an athlete and you know i think the best baseball movie i ever watched and i cried a little bit was the perfect for the love of the game with kevin costner it talked about an athlete being like my career's over and like you have to deal with something this has been you mm -hmm. and athletes have a horrific time when do i leave and step right. away and i feel like some of some so many of us i'm an athlete too i guess in that sense is like we're gambling addicts we just keep oh we can go one more season we right. go uh, look at my mom my mom is like 108 she is and not she, that old and she's still competing in sports she's like early 60s yeah oh she's still competing in sports but 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 the fact is that she's still going at it she's taking the testosterone and all that stuff just to make sure that she's ready to go and because she has that athletic spirit of like, you know what? I'm just going to roll the dice again and just see what happens. And my whole point of this, like with Kevin Van Dam, it's interesting to think in his head why he wanted to step down. Mm -hmm. And I get that he's had a shit ton of interviews and everyone has asked him that. And I wouldn't want to interview him because you're not going to get the real answer from him. But to just to know in his head. Who in what in his head is like, this is time to step back, really? Like, like that's got to be a hard decision when you are kind of the king to just have that i want to step back and do something else and how hard that's got to be like if you just stopped yeah. horses like competing in horses and you're like well this part's done now <laughs> yes you're saying that now but imagine at that point in your life you're like oh, i'm done oh logan has something to say oh shane says he has so so much fishing knowledge it's hard to step away I know yeah. it's hard. And that's why I think it's just so interesting. Like that's just, that's almost a great TV show right there. A movie you could make is just about athletes, like dealing, wrangling with the idea of retiring. Okay. Uh, that's just so freaking hard to do. Um, you want to say that? Go to Logan Welch. Oh, Logan Welch said, whoever asked about fishing, we fish every Thursday, five o'clock to eight o'clock PM and alternate between four locks and big slack water. But I asked, <laughs> who do we get in contact with? when you want to fish who do you ask for do you ask for logan welch do you walk up with your 20 dollars I, I think i think logan just answered the question i think it's just basically we show you up you just show up with at 20 five to eight all right no it's i think it starts at five when the boats go off right five. the boats launch at five yeah. so you need to be in the water by like four thirty. got it so we'll just call this you, the thursday nighter at the river yeah Okay, so you look for places. Logan or Brandon Rowland. Got it. So I will Sweet. I will do when I re-upload this, guys, I'll do a better write up with all that information yeah. about we'll getting in contact in with Brandon and yeah. you know who to meet just Brandon so you're not Logan. giving your money to a meth you know, drug dealer or something like oh just look for Brandon. Right. Yeah, because um, it's not like that. He loves to stretch the truth. It is Hagerstown. It is Hagerstown. <laughs> uh, I believe Kevin Van KVD's reasoning is a lot of changes have been made and fishing sport the, the fishing sport has gone away from the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. I, 
yeah, it really has. No, and technology is a big issue with that too. I mean, there's so much freaking technology and there's so much drama now around the sport. I mean, you look at what Trait Saldane is doing. It feels like every podcast she's on and, and she's the wife of a professional angler, or at least let me recontextualize it. The bilge podcast with, you know, Trait and, and, and Chris Saldane, every time they have an episode, it seems like they drop bombshells. And I think there's a lot more drama. I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a lot more drama in the industry now, or if it's just more noticeable because now everyone tries to have a voice or it's what's happening in what's happening in the fishing industry. Now is what you're seeing that happens in the comedian world, um, Hollywood, things like that. Cause you know, we, a lot of us, uh, at least me and, and you, we watch like two bears, one cave, the Joe Rogan, things like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of big podcasts, they create drama sometimes. Yeah just because it gets clicks. And this is not Joe Rogan experience at all. He doesn't do that. But like Two Bears, One Cave, other people like that, right. they create like the Garth Brooks drama and all that stuff. Yep. They create drama because it's clicks. And so you wonder, is like, is it because everyone has a podcast now or a voice? Let's create some drama because it creates views, which creates brand opportunity. How much of it is that versus nowadays that there's just more, there is more drama going on than before. I, I don't know. There's more drama going on bef than before. Probably like we don't need to get into this because we got to wrap it up. But it's because well, you're dealing lives, with drama too, right? People's the lives are so public. That's why there's more drama out there is because people know too much about what's going on in business that is not their own. That's what mm -hmm. it boils down to. Too much information is shared from people's you know intimate lives with the general public. So there are a lot more opinions out there about things. I mean, do you think that creates issues? I mean, you know, this yeah. is gaming, right? Yeah, I think it creates issues. Catching big fish gets more views, no drama needed. Yes, I agree yes. with that. But does drama get views? I believe it does. Yes. I don't think it's the same view, though. No. I think that makes, if that makes a lot of sense. It's a different like, kind of view. It's a different kind of view. Right. Um, that would be a great topic too for another show. I'm going to write that down. It's like, it is because you see that on YouTube a lot where people will do like dramatic videos and it's like, it's, there's no substance. It's almost like junk food. It's almost like junk food. Yeah. Drama views are like junk food. You eat it, but there's no substance there. Um, man, great show. This is your first time on the fishing, the DMV podcast. It is. You've asked me to be on before. I think I was, on for millisecond you're on a live stream i think uh, like at, at richmond, richmond expo yeah richmond expo just for just for a tiny little second but my brain was elsewhere so it didn't go very well i was prepared this time you were prepared this time and hopefully this means more wins to come again guys uh yeah like and subscribe to the channel it really helps us out in the algorithm again i want to say thank you for everyone who's actually uh there's still a whole other layer of drama around big fish, Shane, LOL. Yeah, okay, Phil just brought this up. So yeah, so if you look at like the big fish drama situation, yes. And there's there's layers to it. Okay. Phil's big fish. Phil, yeah, well, the problem is I think Phil- Where photo is he fishing at? Phil, Phil. Was that, is that the Photoshop? It's either Photoshop or the Bass Pro Shop Aquarium, if I'm not mistaken. I don't. I don't know which. Wait, aren't you in the aren't you in the Why ocean you take right now? Me fishing there. Uh, yeah, we probably should take you there instead of the Upper Potomac. We'll do that. But anyway, with all that said, guys, uh, like subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts Thomas Aaron's and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.